Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and today I'm very excited to be here with Nancy Lindgren. Nancy is a national speaker, author, and founder and CEO of More Mentoring, and their mission there is mobilizing mentors to impact lives through prayer-focused mentoring, which is just so timely and just pertinent for this podcast. So um, we're going to be talking with Nancy today about her book, Mentoring Made Real, The Power of Authentic Connection. But she has other books out there too. So Nancy, thank you for being here. We just really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you. It's a joy to be with you today, Jamie. Well, before we get started, we like to ask each of our guests, what is your favorite prayer closet? So where do you like to go to meet with God? It could be pretty traditional. It could be off the wall. We like to hear it all. Oh, I love that. That's a great question. I've never been asked that question before. So I love it because I like to call my prayer closets my sanctuary. And we actually just moved to a new house about two months ago. And there's a bedroom up in the second level that has hardly any furniture. But I get down on my knees in this bedroom. I close the door. I turn on my worship music. And this is my sanctuary. And it's just a wonderful place where God meets me and I meet with him. And it's quiet, it's peaceful, there's not a lot of distractions, and I love it. I love that too. So I, a lot of times when I ask that question, I just have this picture in my mind of the movie, The War Room. Have you seen that yes. movie? Yeah, yeah, totally. I love that movie. <laughs> and so there are times, there's at the end of the movie, there is, um, they walk into this, they walk into this room, someone's like looking at the house, and somebody walks into the room that was the prayer closet and says somebody's been praying in here or something like that like it wasn't yeah. obvious by anything that was there but it was just this like it was like maybe the the presence. kind of presence of the holy spirit the yeah lingering effects of that that powerful prayer so i like to think about that and just how you know prayer it like it it is definitely taking place in a different realm from what we can see and hear, but we're bringing God's, it's like, we're, you know, opening up that fabric of that, that stands between us and, and the spiritual world when we pray and yeah. there's just very tangible power and presence there too. So I yeah, love that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get started. I've got, we've got, I've got so many questions for you about this book. So first of all, what, um, what inspired you to write the book Mentoring Made Real and who would you say that it's for? Mm, that's a great question. I, I'll start with who it's for because I really had potential mentors in my mind as I wrote it because I remembered back, you know, probably 14 years ago when someone asked me to be her mentor. She wrote it on a little note and mailed it. And I saw those words, will you be my mentor? And it put a little fear in my heart. And it's like, I don't know what she expects. And I don't know how to do this. I've never formally done this. Of course, I've naturally have been doing it most of my life, but in an organic way, you know, but she officially wanted a mentor. And so I just remember how I felt. And, and yet I said yes to it. And we started this relationship that was so beautiful. And she really just wanted this relationship with me and to be able to talk and share and share each other's burdens and share the good things and always pray together. And we, we would always come away with such a refreshment and a lifting of our burdens. And I just thought, wow, this needs to be shared with others. And this is not hard. It's very simple, but yet it was so powerful. And we began to see God do amazing things in our hearts. So I just, I wrote it with those people in mind. I could see them because I saw myself. It's like, I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do this, but I, I need encouragement that I can do this. And so I want to be that voice that tells those potential mentors out there, you can do this. And it doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't have to fit in a box. You can do it naturally, but always bring God into the middle of it. And that's where the power comes from. And that's where the transformation happens. And so it was with those people in mind that I wrote that book. Um, but in the middle of writing that book, I decided to mentor a young woman who asked me to step into her life. And I asked her, what are your expectations? expectations of this mentoring relationship. And she said the words, I just want real. And so I think this younger generation, that's really important to them. They are not looking for some professional, 
some person who has it all together, someone who lives the perfect life. She wanted, she wanted to be able to talk about the real stuff, the hard stuff, the good stuff. And so I think that was just a confirmation for me in the middle of writing, like God is real. Our stories are real. The things we go through are real. Let's just be authentic. And there is great power in connecting and authentically and sharing the good and the hard. And so yeah, I think I want to be that kind of a person that just lives that out and shares those stories of how God is in those kind of relationships. I love that. And you talk about being intimidated because, and I think what, what are some of the things that went through your head? What are the specific fears or just halts in your spirit that were like, whoa, 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 whoa yeah. hold on. That didn't make you just want to dive in and be like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Well, I think along with every other person out there that I've heard from, you feel unqualified. Like you have to be this person who's experienced in this. And, you know, you feel deep down, you kind of feel unworthy that someone would look to you. You know, that title mentor can just kind of be daunting. And it's like, what, what does that really mean? And, and I define it now as someone who's a little further down the road that comes alongside another person and points them to Jesus. And that is not that hard, but I think that word, you know, mentor, even, even in the Bible, it talks about women are to teach and train. You know, I think that can be intimidating. Like I'm not a teacher. I'm not a trainer. You know, that feels like a big role, but if I'm someone who can just walk alongside another person in her life that feels doable. That's a relationship. That's someone that I can just talk with and we can pray together. And that feels much more doable to me. But I think so many women out there feel like that title is, is a big title and they can't get into those shoes of what we think that mentor should look like. Yeah, I agree. And I love that you shared her request of, I just want real, because I think that is, it kind of gives us permission as potential mentors to not feel like there's this standard of perfection we need to achieve. And I love that that, I don't know, I feel like in the last, I don't know, from the time maybe I was in college 30, 30 years ago. Um, yeah, back in the 90s. Um, I feel like between that time and now, I feel like there's been a real shift from this feeling that um, of putting leaders, Christian leaders, especially up on a pedestal. I think there's been a shift from a desire to hear all the right words and all the right things. And, oh yes, I do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and idolizing that yeah. to, yeah. I think we've kind of started to like, for lack of a better or scarier, less scary word, but to deconstruct that idea of yeah. like, there is no ideal Christian woman out there because if yeah. there was, then what would be the point of God making us all so incredibly different? And I think, you yeah. know, it's dangerous to be like, oh, I want to live up to a certain standard for this person that I'm mentoring. So I can't let them know my struggles. I can't let them know my imperfections or my mistakes because then I'll lose credibility. Like, I think at this point, maybe we're, do you feel that way that as oh, just totally. a Christian society, we're moving away from that? Yeah. And, you know, I'm glad we're moving away from that because I think social media, you know, the reels out there show this perfect life and all the good right. things that's going on. And, and yeah. you know, I think of so many women that put those things out there and behind the scenes, I know what's really going on in their life and it's not pretty and it's hard. And, and yet we put the, the good out there and we're sometimes not everyone, but a lot of us are afraid to share the, yeah. the hard things, you know, out there to the public. And so, I don't know, I just think, I think the younger generation really respects us even more when we're real and when we're honest and when we're authentic and they can trust us even more. And I've seen statistics on that, that that's where they go deeper with us because they know we are real and we do have struggles. We don't have perfect marriages. We, we don't have perfect kids. We, you know, we're not perfect wives and moms, but if we share those and share the honest things, I think then we're relatable. They feel like they can understand us and we're not on this pedestal where they can't reach us. They, they want to be able to relate and to share in that um, authentic relationship. Yeah. And I love that you use the word relationship because it really does. I mean, it just takes the pressure off of, because like you said, well, yeah. what do you, what do you want to get out of this? What are your expectations? Which I think is a great thing to ask if someone does approach you because 
every, I, I imagine every single mentor relationship looks very different. So could you talk Definitely. a little bit about that? Like what is, how would you define mentorship and maybe even explore some different possibilities of what that could look like? Yeah. You know, I think people often ask me, what's the difference between discipleship and mentorship? Because, you know, we hear both of those words, especially in the church and yeah. discipleship, I feel like, feel like it's a little bit more teacher student, you know, we're teaching them something and mentorship. I just feel like is more relational. It is that relationship. We're walking together. Maybe someone is a little further down the road, but we are walking side by side and, you know, that mentor might slow up and walk with that mentee, um, even though she has more experience and maybe she's a little older. Maybe she's not older. Sometimes you can have a mentor who's younger than you are. I've seen that in churches. I've helped start mentoring ministries. They have women who have mentored others who are younger than them. Um, but it's usually always someone who has walked with Jesus longer than the other person. And so I think that's a key piece to it. Um, but I think it can look so natural, like sitting down and going out for coffee and sharing our stories and you know, sharing what God's done. I think a lot of times it's giving God the glory and saying, this is what he's done in my life. And it's not me who's done it, but we're pointing to him. And, you know, my favorite chapter in the Bible is Psalm 145. And it just talks continually, continually about speaking up, telling the next generation, the wonders that God has done, the miracles he's done, how great he is. And I think that's what mentorship can be. We're reminding each other of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And I was just on a walk right before this call with um, someone I'm somewhat mentoring naturally, but we're reminding each other of God's faithfulness and goodness. And I think that's what mentoring can be in a very simple way. Um, it's pointing each other kind of back to the basics of, of who God is and he will take care of us and he will meet our needs and we can leave those needs in his hands and trust him to answer our prayers. Oh, that is so good. Well, what would you see, what would you say is um, like, what are some barriers that keep women today kind of in our like unique barriers in our modern world that keep women mm -hmm. from either mentoring other women or being mentored themselves and seeking out mentorship yeah i think uh, you know even the story of moses i go back to and i look at the story of moses when god called him to go speak to pharaoh and there were like five i words and i i'll see if i can remember them but it was like he felt intimidated he felt insecure he felt insufficient, inadequate. Um, I don't remember what that fifth one is, but it's all those I words. And so the focus was, I can't do this. I'm not enough, you know? And I think so many of us go there. I went there when I was first asked, I looked at inward and I just thought, I, you know, I'm not enough for her and I don't have what it takes. And so I want to be the voice that says, don't look so much at yourself and who you are, but look at God, point them to him. You know, his response to Moses, when Moses said, who am I? God's response was, I am who? And so let's think about that. Like, who is God in my life? And who, what are his attributes? What are his qualities? He is the greatest mentor we could ever have. And so I think that takes the pressure off of mentors. Like we have to be all those things to another person. No, we don't. But God is all those things to that person. And we can show them who he is and talk about him and reflect him. And, and I think that just removes any bit of, oh, this is up to me to make sure this person is growing in their faith and becoming more like Christ and is transformed into his image. No, that's not up to me. That's up to God. And so I think if we can just get rid of those I words and, and think about the I am who and think about the great I am. So I don't know if that helps or if that answers your question, but I think a lot of those I words we all struggle with in some way. Yeah, definitely. I, I would say for sure. Um, and I feel like time and just the, um, not the actual time, but the perception that we don't have time and, and kind of this, um, well, I guess I'll pose this question. Do you feel like virtual mentorship is a, an acceptable substitute for, or as good as person to person in person? Because I know that we are mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm so busy. I can't do this. 
maybe I can fit in just a virtual something once in a while instead of getting together in person. What are your thoughts on that? That's a great question. You know, personally, I meet with people face to face and I love that. And I think that's the best. You can look in their eyes, you can see them, you can sense how they're feeling. I mean, all of that is great. But I have a mentor who lives in California and I'm in Colorado and we have a call once a month for one hour and it's virtual. It's not even FaceTime. I mean, it's not even face to face. It's just, we're talking on the phone. Yeah. And I tell you what, that's the most powerful hour together. And I wouldn't want to miss it. And so I don't think we can say there's only one way to do this. And there's, you know, the right way. I think sure face to face and in person is great, but we can also get creative. We have technology. There's ways we can do this. And I, I wouldn't want to miss that phone call with my mentor for the world. It means so much to me. And so I don't want to limit God either. You know, we have technology these days. Let's use it in creative ways and not limit, you know, but also find those people around you too. I want to have people in my life that are right here that I can go on a walk with, like I just did today. Um, and I can be with face to face. I think that's super important, but it's not the only way. That is good. That, that is really good. And I, I love the fact that you actually have a functioning and beneficial and, and flourishing mentorship relationship over the phone, even not even not even a face-to-face -face virtual, but an yeah. on the phone. Um, my co-host Alana and I are long distance. We live both in Alaska, but hours away from each other. And so everything we do pretty much, except for a few times a year, is over the phone or over Zoom yeah. or, you know, and it, it really, I mean, we have a very deep friendship and it yeah. definitely works. So but it does. we do really does. like getting together in person though. That There is yeah. no substitute yeah. for that, but doesn't mean that you can not have like really deep relationships and, and conversations. I mm -hmm. Well, I am very interested in, um, you know, your, um, your mission involves prayer focused mentoring. So what, what do you mean by prayer focused mentoring and how does that look in your practice uh, and experience? Yeah. Well, it's so fun because we've now written mentoring guides for a mentor and a mentee to sit down and put in their hands to actually go through together. And so some of that is we put some questions to ask each other, some conversation starters. So that's in there just as a way to get to know each other. It helps you go deeper, faster. And then we have some encouragement ideas of how could a mentor encourage a mentee and just things like that. But my most favorite part in that guide is we have prayer um, starters and how do you pray? Because so many people out there are uncomfortable praying out loud or praying with another person and maybe even someone they don't know that well, that can be intimidating. And maybe they haven't done that a lot. And so we just want to equip men and women to even know how to pray or how to go about it. And so every time we meet together, we, we pick out an attribute of God in this mentoring guide. And so we're looking at an attribute of God, his nature, his character, who he is. So every time we come together and pray together, we're getting to know God better, which is such a beautiful thing. So we're going deeper in our relationship with God. And then we always confess out loud together, which we encourage others to do, which that can be a scary thing for someone to do that with another person, you know, but the more I've done that with someone, it's so freeing and it's so healing. And the Bible talks about that. Confess your sins to each other, pray for each other so that you may be healed. Mm -hmm. And then the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And so that confession time is so sweet. And, and sometimes you can just almost hear the chains breaking and the, the bondages that are just no longer there. And when it's something in the dark is brought into the light, God meets us there. And there's something really powerful about that. So we include that in every time that we pray together. And then we always just stop and thank the Lord together for what, how he's answered prayer and how he's at work around us. And, you know, you can't be anxious and thankful at the same time. Our bodies can't do that. And so that thankfulness time just removes the anxiety and it removes any bit of worry or fear. And it brings calmness and a, a strength and a joy and a peace that, you just don't get any other way unless you just really stop and be thankful. 
And then we always close in asking God for anything and everything that we've talked about and shared together. And we just go to him and we put that at the feet of Jesus. And we've, we've provided verses to put a name right in a verse. And we pray the powerful word of God. And we go back and forth and we're united in our prayer and we're praying in agreement. And there is something so powerful about that, that you just can't experience without focusing in on prayer and being so intentional about prayer, not just saying at the very last minute, let's just pray, you know, but we make it very intentional. Like this is a key part of our mentoring relationship. It's not just a, a one minute thing. It's, you know, the majority of our time we want to be praying together. And so I don't know. I've seen the results from that. I've seen God do miracles because of that prayer time. And I, I just know I always want that to be a part of it. And so we've just used that term prayer focused mentoring because we want to include God in that relationship and not just have it be talking or giving advice or sharing our wisdom. As women, we can easily go to that and spend the majority of our yes. time just talking because we're good at that. Absolutely. But yeah. we really want to bring God in. We want to bring God in. He's the best at it. And he knows way more than we do about what's coming and what the future holds and all of that. And we want to, we don't want to turn to him and ask him what he thinks. So I love what you said about confession, because I know Alana and I, um, we, we kind of ebb and flow with this practice, but a lot of times before we'll start recording a podcast episode, we take time and do confession. And it has been one of the, you know, most intimidating things that we began doing because we're like mm, confessing to each other. Um, right. But also the most powerful, I think, of the practices that we've done together in our friendship and in our prayer partnership. Yeah. And um, I just find that because I know when we are coming together the next time that we're going to do confession time, um, it really makes you mindful of what you're doing because there is so much yeah. that can just kind of go like water under the bridge. You don't even think about it. Um, to the point where I remember a friend of mine, um, it, when we lived in Arizona, she was, um, kind of in a mentorship relationship with our pastor's wife. And she was joking around. She's like, yeah, I got together with Christy. And she said that, you know, we're all sinful. And, and I told her, well, I don't sin. I'm a good person. And, and Christy said, okay, just, Take some time this week. Just ask God to help reveal any sin in your life. And she's like, that was awful. She's like, I, I asked God to reveal it. And once I asked him, like, I sin all the time. But sometimes I think one of the tools that Satan uses to keep us from sanctification, like from becoming more than what we are, for becoming what we can be, um, is just simply unawareness and the numbness of busyness, the numbness of checking out rather than introspective reflection and like praying with God and asking for the Holy Spirit to test me, God, know my heart and my anxious yeah. thoughts, see if there's any offensive way in me. Um, yeah. like I think, and so it's just very, very powerful that when I know that we're going to be having a confession time, my mind, like I've got this kind of program running in the background that's taking note of, okay, yeah, you, you've, you were very unkind to your husband. Um, you, mm -hmm. you know, provoked your children to anger. You did this thing. You used this as a vice to deal with something instead of, you know, going to God with it. Um, so it's very, I love that, that you mentioned that and that you make that such a central part of a mentorship relationship yeah. because it's so yeah. powerful. It is powerful. And if you haven't experienced that, if your listeners haven't experienced that, I just encourage them to try it, yeah. you know, with a trusted friend or a mentor of your own and just try it. You're, you're confessing to God in front of another person, you know, so you're, you're speaking to God, but that other person is hearing it. And often that other person is feeling like, oh yeah, me too. You know, I'm right there with you. You know, I'm impatient just like you are. And so there's just something, I don't know, affirming and validating and freeing, like, we all are sinners. We all are sinners. Our hearts are desperately wicked, <laughs> deceitful above all things. And, and let's get it out in the open. And when God cleanses us from that and he washes us white as snow, there is such freedom. We can come to him in such boldness because of that freedom in that cleansing that he offers. It's such a gift. I guess that's the biggest thing. It's such a gift to us. 
Yeah, it, it most definitely is. I wanted to touch on, kind of go back to something you said that just kind of like, you know, resonated with me. You said you can't be anxious and thankful at the same time. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I've read up on this and studied it a little bit. And, you know, physically, that can't happen in our bodies. And I didn't know that until the last few years or so. But I guess our bodies, if we are thankful and are speaking that out loud, especially there, the anxiety cannot be there. They cannot be in our bodies at the same time, which is so interesting to me. Like sometimes I lay in bed at night and then if I wake up anxious, you know, something's on my heart and mind, I just begin to thank the Lord. And it's true. It's just like that anxiety leaves and it's, it can't be in the same place when my heart is thankful. And so if that's a struggle for some of us out there, I just say, try it, try it. You know, as soon as those anxious thoughts well up and start to take over, just begin to think, thank you, Jesus, for the basic things and just start listing them off and just see if that anxiety somehow just dispels. And I've experienced that personally, and I've read that it's true. You just can't have both residing in your body at the same time. That is really good. And I mean, it is, I feel like that is true as I look back because I know one time my mother-in-law gave me advice and she was like, she said, if you, you know, there was a time in my life, I was at a bunch, you know, a couple of little children and was just feeling kind of down in the dumps. And I just, you know, someone told her practice, go through the alphabet and just give thanks. Yeah. Thank God. Um, I, do that. I do that. Yeah. And, and, or maybe it was attributes of God or something, but basically yes. it, 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 it involved gratitude and, and praise and thanksgiving. And yeah. it really is powerful. And I know for myself, like I definitely can be an anxious person and I, I definitely have struggled with worry and. I will, a lot of times I'll just be praying about it, but I'll just say, God, please take this away. Give me peace. But yeah. sometimes I think that is, you're still focusing on that feeling that you have or yeah. that experience yeah. of anxiety. And yeah. I just think that could be a very useful exercise to not just say, I don't want this anymore, but to focus on something else, to channel yeah. channel your spirit into thanksgiving and totally shift yeah. away from that anxiety not just asking for it to be removed or to be replaced by something right. but right. just focusing differently that's very good advice i like yeah. that well and one thing that just helps me i like to say look around in thanksgiving like look at the past what has god done for you in the past but what is he doing right now but also look ahead and thank him before he even answers the prayer. So if there's something hard going on in your life right now, say, thank you, God, that I know you're going to answer this in your perfect timing. I can trust your ways. They're greater than my ways. I mean, think of all those things and just say, thank you, Lord. And it brings you to that place of a deeper trust and a faith in him that just doesn't always come naturally. But if you speak it out and say, thank you, God, I know you're going to respond because you care about every detail in my life. So I'm going to choose to thank you for what is yet to come. Yeah. And I mean, speaking truth when you don't believe it in your heart, I guess, or when you might not even believe it in your brain, you know, you might uh, yeah. speaking that truth, I guess you would know it in your brain. You're just, I know this is true. So I'm going to say it, even if I don't feel it can steer the ship of your emotions and it, it can yeah. really guide you into, uh, you know, it, instead of the tail wagging the dog, you can take ownership of your right. feelings. So that is very yep. good advice. Hmm. Well, you touched on the fact that you have just stories of the ways that you've seen God work through mentorship relationships and through prayer. Could you share maybe one or two of your, your stories that come to mind? Mm, there's so many of them and I do have a lot of them in my book mentoring made real so go there if you want to read more but um, I think one season where I was mentoring a lot of young moms um, it might have been that first year after God called me to start this ministry within one year's time he put 13 young moms in my life and I just began walking alongside them and pouring into them and hanging out at the park and going out for coffee and sitting in their kitchen and, and just being with them. And I had time back then. And that was just a season where I wasn't doing a lot else. And he just put these 13 special young women in my life. 
Well, there was a season where I think it was, and, and the Lord knows, but it was around five of them that were wanting to get pregnant and they couldn't conceive and they were struggling. And that was just hard. And I remember sitting at my kitchen table with these different five women at different seat, you know, different times in that year. But we poured out our hearts for God to help them have a baby. That was the desire of their heart. And there were five pregnancies. God answered every one of those prayers and they each were able to have babies. And I just thought, isn't that like God? I mean, it's not always a quick answer. It's not always a yes, but in that season it was. And I was just so in awe of God because I couldn't make that happen. I couldn't, I, you know, that wasn't up to me, but we poured out our hearts and just cried out to him together. And they were so blessed that another woman would come alongside them just with this deep, deep, desire in their hearts. And we asked God to do a miracle and he did. And so that's just one story of, I just, I don't know. I just saw him going, I love you. I care about you. My answer is yes. And it was a beautiful thing to watch. That is. And so you had 13 individual women. This isn't like a group mentorship. This was, you were investing in 13 lives individually. Yes. Well, actually there was about four of them that came together. So there was four that came together, but the rest were all individual. So you're saying you only invested in 10 individual groups of women. <laughs> That's still a lot. That is amazing. It is a lot. Yeah. But I had time, you know, that was a season where I had nothing else going on and yeah. God had just called me to start this mentoring ministry. Mm -hmm. And I, I think my prayer was, I don't know how to do this, Lord. You're going to have to show me. And it was like, he said, here you go. Here's one. Here's one. Just step in, step in. And they all looked unique and different, but I just, I walked with them in that season and it was so fun and so refreshing for me and so satisfying and fulfilling for me. It wasn't hard. Like this was fun. I enjoyed it. I looked forward to it. And together, both of us grew in our faith because we were, the Lord is in the middle of it and we were going to him with all of our requests. So it was a beautiful time for me too. It wasn't exhausting in any way. It was very, it filled my cup up. I'll just say that. That is great. Well, so for each of these, for someone, I know there are women listening that are probably on both sides of the mentoring relationship or want to be. So what would, what would your advice be for someone who would either like to, I guess it's two different questions, who would like to find a mentor, but isn't quite sure where to begin or someone yeah. who would like to be a mentor and thinks they have something to offer. Maybe they're in a new season of life that gives them extra time or whatever, feeling called to it. Um, what would be a first step or how do you even go about it? If they're just like, I don't know what huh. to do. This is kind of new territory. Right. That's such a good question. And I think my answer would really pertain to both, both sides. And I would start with prayer, ask God, you know, tell him this is on my heart. I really want a mentor or I'm available to be a mentor and go to the Lord and just say, I would love to do this. Would you show me who you're putting in my life? And that's what I did, you know, that first year, I don't know how to do this, just put people in my life. And he did. And so I think once you pray that prayer, then you have to be watching and you have to be very sensitive. If there's even someone in your neighborhood or someone at your church or someone in your office at work, or maybe it's in your family or, you know, you just never know where God says, here you go. Here's someone who maybe needs you or you need them. And so pray, I would start with prayer. And then I would say the word pursue. Go after that person and don't wait. Don't wait for them to come to you. Be bold and just say, maybe it's, it's the words, will you go out for coffee with me? I'd love to get to know you better. Instead of I'm here to be your mentor and, you know, don't start with those words, but start with, I want to get to know you. You know, we all long to be seen, heard and known and women love it when they say, you know, someone says, I want to get to know you. I want to hear your story and let's just go have coffee together. So start simply, um, but then lean in. I think my third P would be participate mm -hmm. and get involved in their life and, and maybe say, you know, there's these mentoring guides that are have written by this ministry that, you know, we've done this and let's go through this together, you know, and we don't have to come up with the questions or 
we can just go through this guide together. If someone asks me to be their mentor, I say, okay, let's go through this guide. I'll, I'll go through 12 sessions with you together and we dive deep into questions and get to know each other. But even if it's messy or if you don't connect like you think you might, I just say participate, stick it, stick with it, lean in, even in the messy and the hard. And, and maybe sometimes it isn't a great connection and give yourself freedom to say, that's okay, that was for a season. Maybe we only met three times. But at least we met three times and I got to know her and it was good. But you know what? Maybe we're in different seasons and it wasn't a great connection. So I, I think also with that, give yourself grace. You know, it's not always this perfect connection and it's OK. It's OK. And I just you know, there's people that have stepped in for a season, but then they step out. But we're still friends. You know, they can reach out at any time. I'll reach out at any time. But it's not like we're in an intentional relationship all the time. So I think give yourself space and grace to move and flow and step in, step out and see what God might want to do. That is great advice. I have a couple of mentoring. It's just really bringing back memories talking about this. I have one time in college, I really wanted a mentor and there was one person in mind that was um, a member of our, There, it was a couple that hosted our small group, our weekly small group through the church that I was in in college. And um, I approached the mom, the, the, the wife, and I just said, you know, I would like for you to be my mentor. And she ended up saying no. And it was because she was in a season of just being overextended and she was setting boundaries and she thought about it and prayed about it. Um, yeah. And I was um, I mean, it didn't affect our outward relationship, but I was very hurt. I was very, um, very taken aback because it never occurred to me that someone would say no. And so I never asked yeah. anybody else. And looking back, mm -hmm. I'm thinking we stayed friends. I mean, it wasn't like it, there was any hard, there were no hard feelings, but I just was yeah. in my spirit kind of wounded, like, ooh, I didn't see that coming. So my yeah. advice would be to anyone there, there it might be a no she was already mentoring several w young women and she just didn't have the space and i look back as a mom now and a you know working mom and just thinking okay i respect the fact that she didn't say yes and then just not show up for me because she really wanted to be called and where she was called she wanted to show up and be present and be available and she knew that someone else would be able to give me the kind of time that i needed and so yeah in retrospect, I would have a been okay. I would have been expecting that the answer might be no. And also just um, not given up after that because I didn't go on to find a mentor relationship and I would have loved to have one. And I think it, it would have been yeah. good for me not to be afraid to go to someone else and to hold it more loosely and have it, like you said, not be this scary, daunting thing of, will you be my mentor? And more like just say hi to someone, say, see if you want to go to coffee with them and see what it turns into without it having to necessarily even start out as being something daunting, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you share that. I think I need to add that fourth P to my list. Like, don't take it personally. Good. You know, I like that. Says, Yay. Oh, you have time, you know? I, okay. That's going to be added. Maybe I okay. need another section of my book to add another chapter, right. but don't take it personally. You know, like if yeah. someone does say no, they don't have the time or they're in that season, it's not about you, you no. know, and, and sometimes we can go to that with hurt feelings or offense or, oh man, they don't like me, you know, and but discouragement think, yeah, to pursue the actual next, you know, the next person, because it's just like anything. The next one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have another, another mentoring story where I'm going to draw a blank, but yeah, I'm, I don't remember the story that I was going to tell you, but there was another mentoring story that I had kind of a interesting experience. I'll, maybe it'll come to me before we're done talking and I'll, I'll have the <laughs> aha moment, but yeah, or yeah. maybe that was the only one that's important to talk about today. We asked well, for, for the Holy Spirit to guide us. So that's maybe, right. On to the next thing. Well, you know, when relationships, they're all different. They're all messy. You know, it's not this clean line of it looks exactly like this. And yeah. so I think to just give each other grace and know that God's all about relationship, but it does not all look the same. 
and you might do it really different than I do it. And that's okay. And there might be twists and turns in that relationship and ups and downs and hard things and conflict and that's relationships and that's real life, you know? And so yeah, to give ourselves grace. Well, before we, before we wrap up here, I would love to hear a little bit more about what you do at more mentoring, because you have this, you know, personal one-on-one -on -one kind of thing that you're doing. You have this book to equip people and these other books to kind of give practical guides for mentoring, but you have, you've, you know, you're the president and CEO of more mentoring. What is that? And what do you do with that? Yeah, thanks for asking. Yes, more mentoring is all about mobilizing mentors to impact lives through prayer focused mentoring. So we help the mentors individually by equipping them with tools like mentoring guides and training. We have training videos that mentors can go through if they want to do this one on one. Um, and we have a community, an online community. So those three pieces are really key to our ministry um, to come and learn from each other, that sort of thing. But we also help the mobilizers and the mobilizers out there are those people who have that bigger vision. It might be a church, you know, someone who wants to bring mentors and mentees together and help them connect. It might be some people have a heart for their whole country. Like we're helping some women in Japan because they have a heart for their country. So a mobilizer is just someone with that bigger vision beyond themselves to help people connect and inform these relationships. So we also have training for mobilizers. And how do you go about that? And how do you create a culture of mentoring where you are? So we have training that they can watch and go through that. And we just want to supply every little tool that they need in their hands to help them and to grow this. We want to see our goal. Our new goal is 1 million mentors around the world. And we're reaching men, women, and children. We started out with moms just because that's who was on my heart. And then we moved into women and now it's for men, women, and children. And so we're trying to write guides that will just help as many people as possible and really to help them get started. Because I think that's the biggest hurdle. They don't know what to do, where to start. Um, we want to be a voice that says you can do this and we'll put tools in your hands to help you get started. And then you can take it from there and do it how God is leading you to do it. But to get over that little hump of taking that first step, we want to be that voice that says we're here to help you and walk alongside you. And how wonderful that you're including children. I think that's really so important to, while they're still young, empower them yeah. that you know what as you learn about who god is as you develop a personal relationship with him you can mentor people too that is yeah yeah well and we really see the family being strengthened like parents can mentor their kids grandparents can mentor grandkids we don't always see it in that way you know we feel like we have a certain role, but we don't necessarily know what that looks like. Well, we want yeah. to put tools in their hands like this is you can ask these questions or you can pray together like this. Um, a few years ago, our 25 year old son was willing to go through a mentoring guide with me. And and it was the sweetest season. And we he would ask me questions. I would ask him questions. And we talked about things we would have never talked about sitting around the dinner table. He probably would have rolled his eyes if I would have asked him those questions at the dinner table, but it was in the book. And so we talked about it. And then to pray together with your 25 year old son, it's like, I don't know that we would have done that naturally. You know, of course I would have longed for that, but it was in the book. And we practiced it and did it. And he would ask how he could pray for me. I mean, it was just so beautiful. And we have such a close relationship today because of that time together. So I can just see families really being strengthened as well as we see that role of mentoring, even within, you know, the family unit. I think it's really critical. Yeah. And I think we wear blinders sometimes to our own families. When we think about ministry, we think about other, you know, we think about ministering right. to others and mentoring others, but you're so right. I mean, we have these, as parents, we have these built in mentorship relationships that we can be intentional about. And yeah. I love that you brought that yeah. up, even as they're, even as our yeah. children become adults. Yeah. yeah. Well, you even think about our nieces and nephews. I mean, right. we have an influence on them. They're looking to us and yeah. many of us don't step into that role, you know, of, of having an influence on the next generations and what that looks like. And so, yeah, I want to, I want to have my eyes open to that. I love that. Well, let's um, tell our listeners where they can connect with you online on social media to find out about your books, your um, mentoring resources. 
Yes. So we have a website, morementoring.org. And I'm on there. You can reach out. You can contact me there. Um, I'm also on social media. You can look for my name, Nancy Lindgren, on Facebook, Instagram, or even more mentoring. We have a ministry pages on social media as well. So you can find us there. But yeah, I'm willing to come and speak and get out there and, and share my knowledge and what I've learned and my experience with anyone who wants to learn more. I'm always eager to hop on a Zoom call and just chat more. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing today. I'm, I, I know I got a lot out of this conversation, Nancy, and um, yeah, I just, I can't wait for our listeners to get to see some of these resources and, and read your book and maybe get into a formal training. Um, Cause I know there are women out there that are just kind of looking and just wondering how they can do more in this area. So thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. How Thank can we, you. Oh, yeah. Well, how can we pray for you today? I'm going to close this out in prayer. Oh, I love, love that. Um, you know, we just shared this new goal in the past few weeks of having 1 million mentors around the world, and it feels so big, and we have no idea how to do that. And I would just love prayer for God to open doors and show us what that looks like and, and where to go and what to say and and um, how to track it. I mean, people are going to go like, how many do you have now? So we need to know how to figure out how to track that even. It's like, I don't know how to figure that out, but the Lord does. And we really believe he put that number on our hearts. I mean, I had my Bible open one day as I was praying and the, and the 1 million number was on my heart and I looked down and in my Bible, it said a million right there. And I just, it was that confirmation I needed that this was the Lord saying he can do it. He can do it. And, you know, our theme verse is now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so we just want to be on his path and following him wherever he leads us. And so, yeah, I'd love prayer over that. All right. Well, amen to that. Well, let's pray. And Nancy, thank you once again. And yeah. I, we just wish you all the best with moving thank forward you. with that goal. Can't wait to have you back on to celebrate that goal. <laughs> thank you. Can't wait either. <laughs> all right. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for Nancy and this opportunity to focus on the topic of mentoring. We just pray for each person listening right now, Lord, that you would just um, spark spark some kind of recognition in the hearts of the women listening um, that you want to move forward with this um, this endeavor of mentoring, whether it's being mentored or mentoring someone else or even both, even being on both sides. Mm -hmm. We just pray that you would um, equip these women with everything that they need to move forward to just take risks and engage in relationships to further your kingdom and to further the relationships with um, the people around them for us to be able to look outward and not be so inwardly and selfishly focused that we would really be on the, on the lookout for these divine appointments of, of women that you want us to invest in um, or women that you want us to um, connect with to help us to develop in our relationship with you. We just lift Nancy up to you now, God, and we just thank you for the ways that you've spoken to her and given her vision and mission for her ministry. We do pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you would provide that million mentors that, that they're praying for, that you would equip them to track it in a way that they can um, just be encouraged as they see the numbers growing. And Lord, we just know that you are faithful to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. We pray for this book that she's written and um, just pray that it would get out to just the right people. And mm -hmm. we just know that, that you can open the doors that have been closed for a long time. You can cut the red tape mm -hmm. that has seemed to mm -hmm. be in place because you're God and we trust you to do that, God. And we just know that you have big plans for Nancy and for this book and for her ministry. And we just pray that thy will be done, thy kingdom come, mm -hmm. that there would be no barrier that wouldn't be overturned, that there would be um, just a straight, um, clear path 
for her and all the things that you have for her. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much.